Hello everybody and welcome to this ramp um vi Do you mind? Who's this? Oi, you yeah, bugger off. I'm doing a ramp amp video. Yeah, go on up it, sunshine. Up it. Up it, get out of here. What are you doing? Right, so back up to <laughs> So back onto this video. This is a ramp amplifier guide. And what we can see here. This is what we're going to be explaining today. Hello everybody and welcome to a new video. For this video we're going to be going over my Twine Endurance Ramp Amplifier build in which we actually recycle the husks in the geyser. So I will be putting out another video for you to watch all of the interactions of how to use this base shortly after this video gets out. But for now we're just going to be showing a build guide of how this is built. So what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be starting with the information that you need about the different AI mechanics. So to start with the husks, what the husk is going to be doing is spawning over on this east side. Their aim will be to come running all the way up to your amplifier. Now if you notice the amplifier is completely open, but don't worry, they shouldn't be despoiling on here. So the interactions of the husks is to actually get round to this monitor. So on every amplifier, you have one of these monitors, which are like these little computer panels. Now, since it's on the rear of the amplifier, it works, well, very nice with linear aggro, which allows us to be able to build around the back. But just for the husks, their aim is to get towards this monitor. Because they're trying to get round to this side, if we put structures in the way, these are non aggroable structures which help guide their pathing towards the outside to stop accidental despawnings from them touching onto other parts of the amplifier, which can happen if you don't use these structures around it. So once they get round here though, what they're going to be then doing is then getting launched off and going down here which is once they get dropped down here the husks are then going to either land onto this surface in which case they'll drop down here and then try and go into go up these stairs like the rest of the husks are all going to be doing once they come down here and try and get up these stairs this stairway offers the quickest way up to the amplifier they have to path over this <laughs> geyser and geysers are like infinite floor launchers so we'll see they're going to get stuck what you need to do though is just make sure you've got this backboard on this kind of floor piece up here with the wall just to stop them getting thrown up here otherwise this can happen where you've got this and they get lobbed back up here which gives them the option of being able to go up this tunnel however most times they will just jump straight back down this just helps stop in any of that happening however if you don't want to use this stairway so this stairway goes ooh. actually we'll, we'll cover the stairs first so this stairway, how to build this stairway, what we're going to use for this is we're going to start down at the geyser. So where the geyser is, we're half editing this half. So this is half a stair and this is put just to the side of the geyser so that they have to commit to traveling halfway across. And we're just going to put a wall and a, and a half wall here just to try and stop them from being able to sneakily get around here, maybe be on the side of the stairs, which we don't want. Then we've got one wall and a ramp just to kind of support this ramp up above to keep knocking them back. However, when we get this stairs, what we're going to do is use half stair at the bottom and then what we're going to do is then we're using 180 degree stair edits the whole way. Now to edit this, what we're going to need to do is edit them round like this and then release it and we are going to have a stair that goes up like so. And then what we do is just keep placing these the whole way up until you get over to here if you want the smashes to fall down there you edit it over so instead of a 180 you edit it just 90 degrees to the left and this is going to connect up to the corner of this part of the terrain here then what they're going to be doing is walking back around here so that's the husks and what the husks are going to do. Also, if you don't have that geyser, they can come through this tunnel. So if they land down here or land down here, they'll go through this cave. So they'll go through this cave side. This also links up with the other part of the cave up the top here. 
and they're going to be recycling the entire way up this cave. So it's a fairly long route as well that I'm 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 running this whole journey. It's a it's a pretty long route. This also means you can end up trying to use structures behind here and try and fling them back off as well. Or use like an extra you can place extra floor launchers along here with the aim of trying to knock them off as well if you were trying to connect more ramps at the top across here and trying to knock them off. So now, yeah, that's the husks covered. Now, what we're going to be doing now is covering over the idea of what the smashers are going to be doing. So for the smashers, they're also going to be spawning over here. Now, since smashers have a linear aggro pattern, we'll get into this more in another video, but smashers normally have a linear aggro pattern or they can have a non-linear aggro pattern. Recognizing which pattern they have is going to be vital to knowing the exact strategy to use against these enemies during those waves. So what's basically happening now is that when the smashers try to charge at the objective, they're actually charging at the smasher bridge. So this means that what they're going to end up doing is just, well, hitting the amp and then pathing all the way up. Now, this also means because they're in this state that they'll also avoid the structures to the rear of the amplifier. So right around the rear here, we see like they're not attacking the rear of the amp. And what they're going to be doing is going up the top and recycling round in circles for the rest of the wave. And this is also very, very nice because at the rear of the amp is where we're actually recycling the husks off the edge and down into the geyser. So it's very nice because it allows us to be able to incorporate both kinds of builds by doing this strategy. Now what we're doing, because they're ignoring those walls, is we're building a smasher bridge. So the smasher bridge is a thing which is going to be drawing the aggro above the actual amplifier. So they won't be aggroing onto this and instead coming up the smasher bridge. To use the smasher bridge, what we're going to need to do is put these half walls in. So as you see, once we get to the end here, we're just going to build a ramp up and connect it across to where these ramps are, which are being used by the floor launchers, so that they have a straight path over to those structures above the amplifier. So if we go up here, we'll then notice that we've got a whole line of wall launchers with these half walls and tar pits in the way. And this is just to make them get knocked off down below. Once they get knocked off, they'll come around and recycle all the way back around again. Notice is because their aggro is being drawn up to these structures above, which are above this build right here, which is above the lighthouse, which brings us on to our next subject, the takers. So the takers won't be able to get us if we're standing on top of the amplifier. So if you notice, this is actually the skeleton of the lighthouse design. So the lighthouse design was something which I made for countering takers. So if you're on stay on top of the amp, the takers can't actually phase through to get you. Now part of the reason for this is also the way that we've designed the top side of the amp. These floor structures aren't connected to the top side here. So if they were connected up to the top side where we're standing on this same level, then they could phase through that wall to get us. So what we're doing, we're editing all of these into half floors so that the um, takers aren't actually able to phase through to get us. An easy way to get on top of the storm shield would just be to leave a door open here at the bottom of this ramp so we can just go down here and now we're on top of the amplifier and we're free from the takers. Takers also won't be able to come at you from down on these lower platforms. I do have another video which is called the Taker Box Controlling Takers or maybe something like the Lighthouse. I will try and link it down below in the description or put a little thing above that you can click on so you can actually look up this build in depth of how it works. So basically, yeah, that just stopped this. We'll just aim at stopping the takers from getting us. However, we're also going to talk about another way that these half floors can come in kind of handy as well. So now we're going to go on about the lobbers and flingers. So this piece here acts like a lobber shield coming all the way out to try and stop the lobbers. And what we're doing is we're putting in their kind of preferential throw range, we're going to be putting these. So they're going to come to this area of the terrain 
and want to throw. So what we've actually done is we've loaded this with freeze traps and we can put samples here as well. You can even add some stun lights. However, you can also just do about. They have quite a low impact and the freeze traps really do keep them frozen for ages. And if you'll notice, what we've done above is we've tried to make it so this whole area around is just completely blocked off with ceilings so that they can't throw from other areas. You can also cover this bit up if you wanted to as well. You don't need to, though. I, I pretty much have mine like this. And this is going to be their preferred throwing spot. However, if you did want to have it without any sort of lobber shield whatsoever, you can pretty much do without these entire lobber shields and just have it where you've just got loads and loads and loads of anti-air up top, which is another thing. So these anti-airs are basically all designed up here to just take out any sort of um, what's called lobber balls, like the purple skulls. So these things will take out purple skulls very, very well. It's like it's like a machine gun spaceship sort of shooting all these uh, lobber skulls down, which it just looks amazing. And you can completely do without any lobber shield. Now, the reason that you can also go without a lobber shield is due to the fact of how the flingers will work. So the flingers will mostly try and path onto here. But if a flinger wants to throw a husk, what that's going to do is pretty much not much. Now the husks do do a lot of damage to the actual structures and also the husks aren't likely to get killed by the anti-air since only one anti-air will target a husk at a time when it's being thrown. So it's not likely to kill it since these are built for lovables. But if we're using a base, which is what we're going to be placing on the back here, we put our base right here on this back piece, this is going to completely stop a lot of the damage going to the base. So it's not likely to get destroyed by any husks that have thrown at it. Now, the nice thing about that is, if they're not getting destroyed, is that the enemies that then get caught up here are really bad husks. They're poo husks. They're not going to do much damage to structures. They're not going to cause you much issues in the game. And they're just taking up spawns. Now, the idea of that is that once they then get up here, they won't do anything they're just going to come nicely down here. Now, you'll see I've left all these half pieces in, which also to stop the takers phasing through, but there are also gaps to allow the husks to drop down. So they'll come down through these gaps. Now you you might think, oh no, they can come through here and despawn on the amplifier. No, that's not something they can do. So they won't actually come through, unless like it's something like, like a mini one directly trying to jump right at you. But that's not going to happen. They, they don't. I don't think the little ones don't get thrown up. It's just normal husks. So the normal husks will just naturally want to jump off the side because they're trying to get to the monitor, which is like what we said earlier. But the monitor's the, the thing around the back, and that's all they're trying to get to since the everything else has the corner sides all blocked off. You could end up occasionally with one that rarely manages to get on top of it somehow, but it's far and few between. But he'll just stand there and be beating on it. But aside from that, this is where they're going to come down. And once they get here, they're going to get launched off. Now, this helps trying to use up a lot of the kind of the spawns and just fill it with a lot of really bad husks, which will just get stuck around the back here. So now that we've covered those other mechanics, what we're going to probably talk about just now is we're just going to show how to deal with the boss. So if we just uh, get into some clips now of how I deal with the bosses. So what they're going to be doing is going straight through to the back and we're just going to see what happens. So this is on a boss wave. So this was a wave 13 and this would be using the Sir Lancelot. Now the Sir Lancelot is like a utility weapon you can use to poke the bosses. And then this means you can get them all the way down into the geyser down below here. And this is where they stay stuck for the whole rest of the round. As well as, well, the rest of the enemies. So you can see they're all, they're all just uh, happily stuck around the back here. Now, just to note, if you're kind of trying to do this with the bosses, a really nice place to put the slow field is right where I've just placed it, as it allows you to cover all the angles of the rear of the amplifier whilst they're attacking it. And you can just stand in those places where I've just put these signs. Now, if you stand there, this means that you're in the right place to be able to bull rush off the boss when he comes in. 
So when he's actually coming in, you're going to be able to just stand there, wait for him to come and just bull rush him off. If he has got like acid pools, just stand above him and then drop down onto the side of him. Um, and this means you should just kind of land on like one of the ledge or hopefully and you won't go flying into the lava with him. And I believe that covers quite a lot of the mechanics of this idea. However, what we'll do now is go over some of the other reasons why I've added things into this build. So if we look at this build, what we've got is we've got these floor spikes. So these floor spikes, you can use floor spikes, freeze traps for either one of these. Now, this would be designed just kind of doing damage. So these can do damage as well as slowing them down. So the idea of floor spikes is that you don't necessarily want to kill the ones that are trying to get around the back, but you're trying to help slow down anything or kill them if they're staying here. You can end up with some husks that want to stand in this corner here and be beaten against these walls. Now if they're doing this, it causes an issue because you can't let these walls go out because then you'll get problems where husks will start accidentally despawning onto this amplifier or just walking straight into it, which is not what you want. So by having this, you're trying to just put above it, you can use ceiling electric fields or these tire drop traps and these will be able to reach down two tiles to kill anything in this corner area. Then we also have a sound traps opposite on these walls as well as on this side and he's aiming at just stunning or sort of keeping the husk dancing which are in this area and that's all it's trying to do it's just trying to deal with them we also then have the electric fields which are able to reach out sideways and help to kill the ones which are also bashing from in these corners as well as we also have some here which when husk pass underneath it's also going to reach through and trigger it, the husk just to the side of it as well so under each of these floor pieces we have electric fields. Now, something you can also add in, which is quite nice, is anti-airs on top of the amplifier. So the reason we can put them sort of here, right above just the side of the amp here, it can be useful just to help deal with things such as like the bone throws or something. When you're trying to stand on the amplifier, because you don't really want to be adding aggroable structures too near the front side of the amp, you can actually put these here to help deal with them. However, the pistols will still be able to throw through and hit you. So you just have to be careful of the pistols. Something you can do to help combat that would be just to kind of fill this front area, which will be where they'll try and sort of snipe you from down here with freeze, but that'll just get quite costly. So something else you can do instead of staying on top of the amp is actually stand up here. Now, if you stand up here, a lot of the assassin husks will also try and get to you. So since assassin husks are kind of like player aggro, they'll get, instead of going thrown off, they're going to be drawn up this slope as well as the smashers, but the assassins will come for you. So they're gonna be coming up this same pathway and trying to get to you but by doing so, to get a nice hit on you, they're going to get flung off and end up down in the lava or getting recycled off down there. But they, uh, yeah, they go they go flying with the knockbacks, so they're going to die. And yeah, so that covers the assassins. Then what we're going to do is... What do I need to cover now? Oh, so these sand walls also... These also help against propane, helping them to drop their tanks so that they don't try and target this. Normally, they will just go straight through, but if you've got them in a slightly odd pattern, they can just maybe target these, but these will just help them drop their tanks. Once they drop their tanks anyway, they're, they're gonna still stay on a normal course and try and go for the aggro structure, which is the smasher bridge. So they'll come up and then get knocked all the way down into the lava. So now we're just going to go over the failures of the build and it's going to be about how to recognize and deal with non-linear aggro. So what we can see now in the footage is that these smashes are under non-linear aggro and that's because there is a boss wave which is happening and because of the boss wave these smashes will take on the same sort of pattern that wave as the boss. Well it will be a non-linear aggro with a monitor preference. 
So what they'll do is they'll be whacking out these structures around the monitor side at the rear of the amplifier. Now we don't want this because that's where we're recycling the husks. Now to actually spot non-linear aggro what we're going to see is the enemies are actually all targeting the rear of the amp that are structure based. So anything that is like lobbers, propane, smashers, well even the boss that are like targeting in the back of the amp will be a indicator of non-linear aggro. Something you can do just to deal with the propane and stuff though is just by having anti-airs to the side on the ground and that will help deal with the propane and the lobbers. But the main threat in this build during an, um, non-linear aggro waves will be the smashers. So what you want to do is just focus trying to kill them. Something you can do is just use sort of hero abilities which can help such as base Kyle and Ice King because they're going to prevent the smashers from getting in easily and being able to just one shot the walls as well as Ice King has a nice effect to actually be able to freeze a smasher allow you to have a bit of time to deal with it. Also abilities such as Zenith or weapons such as the Love Bow have sort of like a freeze kind of ability um, to be able to s sort of freeze or conditionally stun the smasher for 10 seconds for the instance of the Love Bow. So what you want to do also is use high impact or like high knockback weapons such as like rocket launchers and the compression bow. This is because as you can see in the footage in the background that it just got launched off the end of the cliff. And this is because someone's using a Santa's little helper I believe it was to knock them back and because of their high impact and high knockback they got thrown off the edge of the cliff and they'll stay down there and get recycled on the gozer. Now in this footage here what you can see is that these smashers have actually gone and attacked the back of the amp where the monitor is. Now they aren't actually acting under non-linear aggro, it's because of player interference and their orientation around the amplifier. So you have to be very careful of player aggro that you don't place yourself in a position where you alter where the smashers are trying to go or what they're trying to do. So it's kind of safe just to stay at the top and just watch and see if there's anything going wrong. Now. This is what it should look like if you're using a non-damage build. So this will be with no lobber shield and you can see they're all just throwing all the things up and you won't be doing any damage to try and kill them so that's what it should look like. And then you, this should be during a damage build it should look something like this where you're trying to control the flingers and the lobbers a little bit more to make sure that they go into the freeze area because you're going to be maybe killing stuff with traps it just means you're not getting loads of enemies constantly flung at your base. Now, as you can see, the smashers are still going around in the smasher bridge. The only problem that you could come across in waves like this would be the non-linear aggro, which is what I've just spoken about and what you need to look out for. But otherwise than that, it should be a pretty easy build. You'll just be able to have the, the husk pathing around to the rear of the amplifier and getting recycled down into the geyser. And it's pretty fun. So I hope you've really enjoyed this video. And I hope you've uh, maybe had a little bit of fun. Maybe you can try this out. Let me know how it goes. And yeah, if you want to see any more videos, I should be putting them up in the little end cards here. And maybe go check them out. Otherwise, look in the description for any updates. I'll keep you posted and have a nice day. See you around, guys.